Okay, so welcome again. Uh, my name is David Maida. I'm working in SUSE, in SUSE Studio team. And today I will talk about Kenny, uh, Ruby on Rails security scanner. So first, let's have a look at uh, web security in general. So there is this organization called Web Application Security Consortium that does some web security projects and produces some reports. And in 208, they did some testing of about 12,000 websites, various kinds of testing, various kinds of websites. And they found quite disturbing results. So 65% of the websites contain some form of information leakage, meaning some users can access information which they shouldn't. 38% uh, of websites are vulnerable to uh, cross-site scripting, meaning that you can inject some JavaScript somewhere which does some harmful things for users. 34% uh, uh, of the websites uh, got problems with HTTPS configuration and other transport layer settings. For one third of the websites, you could identify the software that runs there, and then you could, of course, attack specific vulnerabilities in the specific versions of the software. And, of course, don't forget the usual SQL injection problems, which affected 13% of the websites. So when you look at these numbers, they are quite disturbing, and I don't know how the report is really accurate, because it's hard to verify, but even if these numbers were like one half or one third, that means still that web security is quite a big problem. In SUSE, we have quite some web applications, uh, and in OpenSUSE too. So we have SUSE Studio, which I work on. We have WebIAS, which is a web-based configuration tool. We have SLMS, which provides updates for appliances created by Studio. We have SUSE Manager, which is yet another configuration tool. And OpenSUSE has also some projects, like the build service, and probably many others, which I don't know even. And for one thing that's common for these applications is that most of them are written in Ruby, or from the ones on the list, all except the SUSE manager, for example. So when we uh, try to deal with web application security in SUSE, we focused on Ruby. And we dealt with security by doing security audits. And this is kind of a tedious manual work, so we try to automate it at least to some degree. So our security uh, researcher, uh, Thomas Pige, came up with a Perl scanner, uh, which scanned the source code for some suspicious patterns that he could then look uh, in more details. So it, the, the scanner was really primitive. It just basically was a glori glorified grep. It, uh, here you can see an example of patterns <laughs> Uh, that it uh, tried to scan in the code. So you see that it's quite a messy thing and it doesn't understand Ruby properly. So a year ago, uh, me and another developer, Flavio Castelli, decided to create a new tool. Uh, we call it Scanny and replace the old Perl based scanner. The important property of this tool is that uh, it contains a proper Ruby parser. If you know the Ruby world a bit, uh, you know that parsing Ruby isn't trivial and there are a lot of solutions which are, some are good, some are bad. So we chose, after some deliberation, to, to use Rubinius because that's an alternative uh, implementation of Ruby which contains quite uh, uh, nice parser. Nice being meaning mostly that the output of the parser, the syntax tree, is in a uh, format that's easy to work with. We decided to make Scanny modular, uh, meaning that uh, all it's split into separate checks, and each check checks just one thing, for example, some uh, cross-site scripting issue or possible SQL injection issue, and so on. And each of these checks is in separate file, and uh, it's quite easy to uh, understand these checks and to add new checks if you have some custom code, custom tools, which you also need to uh, check with the tool. So, Scanny works uh, in quite simple way. Uh, it passes the Ruby, gets the syntax tree, and then finds patterns inside. So we quickly discovered that uh, looking for patterns in a syntax tree 
just by iterating over and uh, doing all in the code uh, is quite tedious and the code isn't very well maintainable. So we created a special query language called Machete, which uh, is specialized in searching for patterns in uh, Rubinius uh, source trees. So this is a completely separate project. You can use it for uh, other tools. You can find it on GitHub. But it's used uh, as underly underlying library in Scanny. So, uh, after, the, as I said, the project was started about a year ago, and unfortunately, we got distracted and didn't have much time to work on Scanny uh, during uh, after the initial few months. But uh, James, who is sitting over there, proposed that we should put that up uh, on Google Summer of Code as, as a Google Summer of Code project. Uh, could you please raise your hands who is familiar with Google Summer of Code, how that works? Okay, so there are some people who are not. No, it was just a poll. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, uh, there are some organizations, OpenSUSE is one of these organizations, and uh, they create some projects uh, or proposals for projects, and then they seek students to work on these projects during one summer. and uh, they pair up with students, and these students work on these projects, and Google pays them for that. So Google supports open source this way. So we put up Scanny as a, as a Summer of Code project this year, and we found a good student, Piotr Nielaczny, from Poland, who was interested in that. So I worked with him during the summer to uh, improve the scanner. So he added... Uh, Basically, he ported all the checks from the old Perl-based scanner to Scanny. Uh, he also added a command line interface uh, to Scanny so that it's actually uh, usable. He also uh, prepared integration into continuous integration servers like Jenkins and uh, Travis CI. He also created a Ruby DSL for the Machete language and did a lot of other uh, smaller things. So the end result of the summer of code was that Scanny actually can scan for vulnerabilities and uh, is uh, approaching a usable state. So what kind of things it checks for? Uh, mostly it's the, the, the stuff that was in a list at the beginning. So uh, it's cross-site scripting, SQL injection issues, uh, HTTP header manipulation, where you can sneak in some bad values. Uh, it checks that you don't misconfigure uh, SSL. It checks for shell expansion, meaning you pass some stuff from uh, the user to shell, and uh, you could, he, if he is clever, he can run commands there if you have these bugs. And a lot of other smaller issues. So I will just uh, do a quick demo how this works. So. Uh, here I have a small uh, controller in a small Rails application. So if I run Scanny on this controller in a command line, it finds no issues because all the bad code is commented out. But if I uncomment, for example, this SQL injection code, so you can, you can, you can see that uh, you are trying to find something by SQL, and in the SQL you are embedding uh, some value which is directly coming from the user, which is obviously dangerous. So if I save this and rerun the scan, it reports that use of external parameters in queries to the database can lead to SQL injection issue, for example. Uh, you, see that it, uh, you see here uh, the CVE number. CVE number is an index into a database of common problems that a web application or other applications have. So, for example, if the user of Scanny doesn't understand what the message means, what the error is, he can look up this issue in the database, and there is usually a quite big article with a lot of examples and description of the issue. So that's quite a useful thing. So let's try something else. This is tricky issue, bad regular expressions. So in Ruby, uh, regular expressions work in a weird way in that the caret sign doesn't 
by default match uh, beginning of a string, but just beginning of a line. And the same thing is with the dollar. It doesn't match end of a string, but just end of a line in a string. So uh, it means that Ruby regular expressions work in multi-line mode by default. And if you really want to match beginning of a string or end of a string, you need to use backslash A or backslash Z. And this is something that people know know. And this is very important because, for example, here we try to validate some parameter to make sure that uh, it's uh, composed only of letters and numbers. But this actually only validates that it contains one line composed of letters and numbers. So again, users can sneak in some bad values which can uh, do some something in your application. So again, when you run Scanny on this input, uh, it says that possible improper legal, legal expression usage and again references the CVEs that de deal with this issue. Last thing I can show is shell expansion. So here we try to execute some command and pass again some input. In this case it's not, uh, it doesn't matter for the scanning purposes that it's some input from user. It's just that we are interpolating uh, some string here. And what can happen that we, we, we don't use an escaping here. So uh, if this string would contain something like semicolon and other command, this would get executed by the shell and this way user can take over your machine quite easily. So again, you run it and you see that the system method passes the executed command through shell expansion. And here there is a quite interesting because when you run a uh, system uh, call with just one string, it means it gets passed to the shell. But if you run it with multiple strings uh, like this, it means it is not really passed uh, to the shell. It's just, it means that the first string is a, is a command and the rest are its arguments. So this is also valid, it does the same thing, but it doesn't pass through the shell expansion. So Scanner is able to detect, detect that and considers this user correct, so it doesn't find any issues with this code. This is something that uh, the Perl tool couldn't do before because it couldn't, it was hard to uh, express that there is a method call with such and such number of parameters and so on. And when you have a proper Ruby parser, it's quite easy to express that. So that way, uh, the scanning uh, scan uh, eliminates many of false positives of the parallel tool. So uh, now I, okay. So, okay, so I'll just skip uh, this section about creating uh, checks. Just few words that if you want to create a new check, you create a class with just two methods. One that uh, searches, contains the machete pattern, which searches for the nodes that you are interested in. And another one that uh, gets past the interesting nodes and that will uh, raise the issues or do some additional examining of, of the nodes and so on. So simple check is something like 20 lines of code. So what if you want to try Scanny? First, you need to install Rubinius. As I said, it uses, uses Rubinius parser. And then you can install Scanny regular, regularly as, as a gem. So like any, any other Ruby-based program. And of course, you can check out the newest code in, uh, in GitHub uh, in the OpenSUSE repositories. So the current state is that the checks are ported. The scanner uh, kind of works. But uh, it still needs some polishing, uh, some tweaking. You notice that there are some impact levels, whether the issue is important and how much. Uh, and uh, the messages need some improvement from usability point of view. So they tell more to a programmer and so on. So we want to do that in the following weeks and months in SUSE. And then we want to deploy the tool internally for our own projects, which I think will force us to do 
even more improvements. So uh, the state is it's usable, but there is still a lot of work needed on the tool. So if anyone is interested in Ruby and in security, uh, I welcome any help with this. So that's all I have, and it's time for questions. Yes? What false positives from other tools are identified? Uh, we didn't run any, any such scans, so I don't have such results. Yes, so the question was uh, that uh, whether I compared uh, Scanny with uh, other tools and whether I correlated the results and false positives and so on. So my answer is no, I didn't do that. For uh, looking up the the CV the CWE uh, values, how do you, do you do you drill down in a in a database or something like that, or how does that work? Uh, this is these are accessible on the web, so all the whole database, the web pages. So I I think we will include some uh, the the CV numbers are hard coded in the in the checks themselves, so each check knows what CV number it's uh, linked with. And I suppose we will uh, in, introduce some uh, report modes like HTML where you will get direct links to the web pages describing the CV issues and so on. So, this. Okay. We have to finish this theme now. Thank you uh, that you have given this presentation. And okay. uh, we right. will begin.